For more than 20 years, I've been obsessed with guitars. From playing them, to working on them, to buying and collecting them, I've built quite the collection of awesome guitars. This season I'm going to be going more in depth showing you some of the partial builds and behind the scenes stuff that I've never shown before. I'll also be answering some of your questions that I've been receiving in the comments below these videos. Of course I'll be refinishing, refretting, rewiring, whatever it takes to turn these guitars into some real shred machines. This is Trash to Thrash. Hey what's up everybody, welcome back to Trash to Thrash, I'm your host Mark Murray. And this week, we're going to be finishing up a guitar that's been floating around the shop for about a year and a half now. Some of you may remember the Stealth Charvel Frankenstrat that I built back in Season 1 of Trash to Thrash. Well, if you remember that guitar, maybe you remember that I had a second Stealth Frankenstrat that I was building alongside it out of a Korean-made 1992 Fender Stratocaster. I bought this guitar back in October of 2020, and it's been floating around the shop. I've been working on it here and there. And since I've got a huge influx of guitars showing up over the next couple weeks, I gotta get rid of this thing because I need to make some space. So I'm gonna be giving this guitar away. You guys know I love to give stuff away. I do my Patreon giveaways every month. So this month for the Patreon giveaway, I'm gonna be giving away this Stealth Frankenstrat. Now I've done a guitar very similar to this here on Trash to Thrash, so I'm not gonna go over the whole build here, but there's a couple really cool key details and things I wanna show you. Things that I get asked about, and I've never had really a good answer because I'm always trying new ways to do things. And I think I found a really good way to do one of these things. So I'm going to be showing you some stuff on the Frankenstrat today. I'll also be answering your guys' questions. So as you're watching the episode, if you have questions about what I'm doing or about a particular build that you're doing, any guitar related questions, leave them down in the comments. And every episode, I search through them, grab a handful of them, and I answer them at the end of the episode. Now, when I started this guitar, Trash to Thrash hadn't even started yet and I wasn't recording everything. So a lot of the beginning of this guitar wasn't recorded in the first place, but like I said, I already showed you a Stealth Frankenstrap being built in the past, so we're gonna jump on in. This is how we're gonna start the guitar. It's already painted, it's pretty much assembled, but we need to do some wiring, we need to do a setup on it, and we need to get it ready and playable. This guitar is already outfitted with a Floyd Rose 1000 in satin gold. It's equipped with a single volume and a kill switch, and a set of gold Wilkinson tuners. This guitar was originally intended to be the budget-friendly version of the Charvel Frankenstrat that I did. When I built the Charvel, I was actually building it for myself, so no expenses were spared. I literally bought everything I could think of to upgrade on that guitar. Here you can see both of the Stealth Frankenstrats together. The Charvel was loaded with a Tessie kill switch in red, all gold hardware, including a Floyd Rose 1000 series in satin gold with a D-Tuna, EMG 81 and 60 pickups, and a set of Goto tuners. Hidden below the surface are some other upgrades too, like an FU Tone Big Block, red noiseless springs, here you can see there's some stainless steel hardware for the Floyd Rose, and of course titanium string blocks. I really love the way this guitar turned out. It was the first EVH style guitar that I had done with this stealth concept of using flat black and gloss black together on the same guitar. I had no intentions on selling it at first, but so many people kept asking me if they could buy it. Using all the parts I used, I came up with a price, and it came to right around $2,000. Understandably, at $2,000, it was out of most people's price range. That's why I decided to make this budget-friendly version of the guitar, which would probably sit around $1,200. These aren't the only stealths I've done though. This was the first stealth design I did. This one I did all blacked out. This is the stealth black Kelly that I did. Again, it's a matte black base with gloss black splatter. It's the exact same color scheme as the stealth striped ones I do. Inspired by this Jackson Kelly, we also did James Rhodes in the same kind of color scheme, but this time added some gloss diamond plate. The original plan for this guitar was to copy the Charvel Frankenstrat, which had an EMG 81 in the bridge and a 60 up in the neck. But I've thought about it more lately, and I want to do a single humbucker shred machine like the original Frankenstrat was. So we're just going to go with the single EMG 81 in the bridge. Of course, we're going with the gold one. And I was thinking back, when I was a kid, we didn't have all these options. We had black EMGs. That's it. They didn't make gold, they didn't make chrome. Nowadays, they have all these awesome options. You can get ivory, white, red. Back then, I think they just made black and white, possibly ivory, and you never really came across the ivory or white ones in stores. It was always just the black ones. But with the new choices that they have these days, the brushed gold and the brushed black metal finishes, I mean, EMGs have come a long way. 
So for this guitar, we're dropping in a shiny, beautiful gold EMG 81. When you build a Frankenstrat, you obviously cut the pick guard, so it's gonna be much smaller. It's pretty much just gonna house the controls or the single control if you just have the single volume. So you'll have to find a way to mount your pickups because normally in a Strat, your pickups are mounted to the pick guard and without the pick guard over the pickups, you're gonna have to mount the pickups directly to the body. In the past when I was direct mounting pickups to bodies, I had actually been using these brackets here, which I had my assistant Ryan make up for me. I bought this aluminum material over at the local hardware store. He cut it up, tapped the holes, made them really awesome so this can screw directly down into the body with countersunk holes and then the pickups can screw into these two outside holes. Very cool design and it's actually kind of a copy of the pickup mounting system from FU Tone. If you guys have ever seen their stuff, it's very nice stuff but they're $50 a piece. So to mount a set of humbuckers is gonna cost you over $100 once all is said and done. Not everyone can afford that. I was trying to make a version of it to use inside the shop here. A lot of people have asked me to buy these over the years, but um, you know, this design was not good because I used aluminum. This needs to be done with like steel or something stronger and I've had a lot of these fail. So I'm no longer gonna be using these. I'm gonna get some new metal in to use. Um, throw that away. And actually what I used for this guitar was good old fashioned wood. I just used some standard hardwood. This is a red oak and I got this right there at the local hardware store. I cut it up using my bandsaw that you see behind me. And what I did was basically just drop the pickup down on top of it and trace the footprint of the pickup, then trimmed it all down, sanded it up and painted it black. For the thickness of how high the pickup was gonna be mounted, this isn't gonna be adjustable. So I like to set up the guitar first, get the strings on it, get the action set so where the guitar is playing really nice. And then I'll figure out what the gap is there that I need to fill. I'll drop the pickup in, I'll see it needs to be raised a half inch or so. And that's where I went with on this. So I got it in the ballpark by just trimming it down, trying it again, bringing it over here, trimming it down, trying it again until it was perfect. It's fully mounted nice and securely. It's got some nice hard wood under it and it looks really good. When you're doing custom guitars, you can't really just use off the shelf parts all the time because that gap isn't always the same from brand to brand. So for different brands, you might need a different height. And that's what's kind of nice about the FU Tone pickup mounting system is that it's adjustable. It actually has a set screw that you can adjust the height of the pickup with. So this is what I ended up with. I actually think it looks really cool that you could see the wood grain through the paint, especially since it's matte black and it's on a stealth model. But to be honest, you're not even gonna see it because it's gonna be hardly visible with the pickup mounted on it. Now my next step is gonna be to just physically center the pickup on it. Then I used a center punch to mark where I'm gonna put the holes that are gonna mount the pickups to this new plate. And next, I drilled the holes out. By the way, I did drill out the holes on the pickups too, I just didn't show it here. But since the screw is gonna be going through the pickup and mounting into the wood, I wanted to make it a through hole instead of a tapped hole. And here it is with its new mounting holes. Now I wanna test it and make sure that this is all gonna fit and look right. I'm gonna be mounting this pickup angled like Eddie Van Halen's Frankenstrat. So I'm gonna set it into the guitar and trace it down how I want it to be mounted. What I'll do next is set down some masking tape inside the pickup cavity. Now when I set the pickup and its mount in there, I have something to trace it onto. And right about there is how it's gonna sit. Next, I'll use this pointer to scribe down where the feet of the mount are sitting up against the tape. And now I've got my lines marked. Now I'll make some measurements on my pickup mount and figure out where I wanna drill my holes to mount this down onto the body. And now we'll head over to the drill press, countersink these holes and make it so these screws are gonna sit flush. Now I'll set our pickup mount down into the bridge pickup cavity and mark the holes where we're gonna drill to mount this thing. Then we'll drill these holes out. You can see the old holes are also there from the last pickup brackets that we were using, but we're gonna cover them up, no one's even gonna see those. Next, I screwed the pickup mount in. There's an issue though. There wasn't really enough meat there for the screws to really catch. I could feel the wood was really thin because on the other side of the body, right here, is the spring cavity. I'm guessing the wood here was less than an eighth inch thick. So I pulled the mount back out and I added some wood glue to the pickup mount. I don't think anyone's gonna really need to remove this and to be honest with the chisel, you could probably remove this one day if you really wanted to. And that looks solid, looks really good. We lost a little bit of paint along the way, 
But to be honest, it's really not going to matter because the pickup is going to cover all those spots. Now I have the pickup cable plugged onto the back of the pickup and the pickup is set in place. I secured it with some gold screws and it looks awesome. Feels great too. Now this pickup is perfectly mounted, super solid, super secure. Hey, I want to take a minute out of the show real quick to tell you guys how you can help support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash. Number one way is to help spread the word. Share this episode. Share it on your Facebook and Instagram stories. Take a screenshot of it. Send it to your friends. Let people know about Trash to Thrash. It helps out way more than you guys know. And if each one of you guys told one person, you could help double my audience. Another big way to help out is to subscribe to my retro gaming channel. You can see all this cool stuff behind me here. We got Turok going on the TV. We even have a Xbox Explorer. We got Pokemon games falling down. We got all kinds of stuff. So I'm a big retro video game fan. I love buying and selling this stuff and searching for it used um, in, you know, on Facebook Marketplace, OfferUp, eBay, all the same things I do when I buy guitars. I'm doing it now with video games too. And I'm starting to mod consoles, so keep an eye out for that. On one of the next Trash to Thrashes, I'll give you a preview of what I've been doing. I have links down below in the description to my retro gaming YouTube channel, and there's an Instagram page that goes along with it too, Guitar Guts Gaming. So go subscribe to both of those. So far, people have really been liking it, and that makes me happy. Of course, one of the biggest ways is to go become a patron. For as little as a dollar a month, or up to $10 a month, you can become a patron. With the $1 package, you're a supporter, and you get ad-free versions of the videos, you get Patreon-exclusive content, so a couple extra videos per month. And with the $10 package, you get all that. Plus, you're entered into my monthly guitar raffle giveaway where I give away a guitar or a giant prize package or something really cool. Of course, we got the Amazon links down below, so if you see tools and supplies that I'm using throughout the episode, even some of the parts I buy, all the links are listed down below. When you use these links, you actually help support Guitar Guts and Trash to Thrash. Every time you buy something using these links, Amazon will credit my account and it charges you nothing extra. That means Amazon's going to take the hit on this one. So if you buy something over there using my links, they'll take a little percentage off, slide it over to me for referring you guys to them. And even if you don't buy the things that I suggest in the links, as long as you use the links to get to Amazon and then buy anything, they'll actually give me the credit for whatever else you buy. So this is a great little way to help Trash to Thrash and Guitar Guts. Another huge way to help the show is to go to GuitarGuts.com and click the Guitars for Sale link right at the top. Here you're going to find the guitars I have available for sale now, as well as some pre-order guitars. You'll also find the Guitar Guts Kill Boost Signature Pedal and the Guitar Guts Kill Switch. Or if you have a cool guitar that you already like but you want it rebuilt, you can send it in to me. Send me an email, mark at GuitarGuts.com, and tell me about the guitar and what you want done to it. Send me some pictures too. As long as it's not a guitar we've done before, it will be featured on the show. All right, here we have our little pick guard pre-assembled already. You'll notice there's a pickup selector switch, which we're actually going to remove because I've decided we're just doing one pickup on this guitar after all. It has a single volume installed on it and a gold Iron Age Guitar Gut Signature Kill Switch. First things first, we're going to route the wires for the kill switch over to the volume pot. I've also trimmed the wires down to the appropriate length and stripped each one of them about 3 16 of an inch. What I'm doing here is called tinning the wires. Basically all I'm doing is heating the wires up and applying some solder to them. So when I solder them to the pot, the solder is going to transfer a lot easier. Now I've soldered them to the back of the leads here, the red wire going to the in and out and the black wire going to the ground. And when you press the kill switch, it's going to short these two connections. That's why it mutes your guitar because it's actually going to ground your main signal. Now I've pulled the switch, got the kill switch mounted, and I covered all the empty holes with electrical tape from the inside of the guitar. And it's time to connect the pick guard to the guitar. One connector comes from the output jack and plugs into the volume, and the connector coming from the pickup also plugs into the volume. There's a lot of extra wire down here, so I'll bundle it all up and use a cable tie to secure it. And the last step to having it all wired up is to install the battery, wrap some foam around it, make sure it's secure inside there and it's not going to be bouncing around anywhere and then mount the screws to hold the pick guard on. Oh, but wait! These holes aren't lining up with the old holes that were in the guitar. Two of them worked, and two of them don't work. Not a problem, though. Luckily, the holes were actually pretty far off. If they were just a little bit off, that would have been worse, because then I'd have to fill them and then redrill them. But these ones, we can just completely drill back out. With the Charvel Stealth Frankenstrat, I wanted it to be super clean and nice. But with this one, 
I'm putting the single coil up in the neck position because I want this one to be a little different and a little closer to the real Frankenstrat. You'll notice I left all the pick guard holes and I'll be installing this selector switch into the middle pickup cavity. I've had this one around in my toolbox forever, planning to put it in a Frankenstrat of some kind, and finally it's going in this one. One thing that's kind of interesting about this is the hardware is all gold, but the single coil pickup and the selector switch in the middle have parts that are silver on them. So it kind of gives it a two-tone hardware coloring. The broken selector switch had some loose pieces that were kind of flopping around, so I grabbed some super glue and secured them down, make sure they're not gonna be moving around in the guitar. And that looks awesome. And now it's time for the full reveal and a shred on this thing. Boom. I don't like to build the same guitar twice, but dang, this thing turned out different enough that I really like it. To think that this started life as a 1992 stock Stratocaster. Now it's got the Floyd Rose nut mounted, the gold Wilkinson tuners. I mean, look at this thing. I might even like this one better than the first Stealth. Let me know down in the comments what you think of this thing and which one you actually like better. I like that you can see some rust on that single coil pickup in the neck position. And here you can actually see what I was saying about the switch in the middle position. It's got silver and gold tones. It's got a single master volume, a gold guitar gut signature kill switch made by my friends at Iron Age Accessories, the gold output jack, that insane looking EMG 81. I feel good about this one. And it can be yours. Remember, if you want a chance to win this thing, you gotta sign up to the CEO tier of my Patreon page. The link is down in the description below. I know some of the EVH fans out there are gonna be skeptical of that EMG81, but let me show you some things. I believe a lot of the tone comes from your fingers, and a lot of it comes from your amp, and I'm gonna demonstrate right now. We'll start with some heavy stuff, some heavy distortion, some riffing, and palm muting. I use an Axe Effect, so I have an endless array of different guitar tones. I know some people love these digital bass amps, and some people hate them. I love them. Now let's hear some EVH tones. like this guitar, I like the sounds it's making, and also it makes great cleans. Let's check them out. Alright, so the guitar turned out awesome. I love the little accessories in the middle and the neck pickup positions. If you want to win this guitar, there's a couple ways you can win it. 
Number one is to go join my Patreon CEO tier. There's a link down in the description that brings you over to my Patreon page and there's two tiers, $1 or $10. The $1 is just a supporter uh, tier who get ad-free versions of my videos. If you wanna be entered into the raffles every month and get a guitar or get one of the prize packages, you gotta join the $10 tier. So that's the CEO tier of my Patreon page. Each month I do a giveaway like this for a guitar or a huge prize package, something worth hundreds of dollars. So for 10 bucks a month, it's definitely worth it. And you get to help out the channel, guitar guts and trash to thrash, all that stuff. So it's much appreciated. The next way to get entered is to leave a comment down below this video and write what is your favorite type of stealth finish. Would it be like the EVH Stealth Frankenstrat, the Stealth Splatter that I did on the Kelly and the Jackson Rhodes? Maybe the Stealth Wolfgang is more your thing. Or if you have another idea for something stealth, let me know. I'd love to hear it down in the comments. Each week after the show, down in the comments, you guys leave me some great questions. So if there's anything you've been wondering about building guitars, or as you've been watching, you have a question about how I'm doing something, leave your questions down in the comments below. And I pick a couple every single week to answer here on the show. This is Trash Talk. Now before we get into the questions that you guys asked me, I actually have a question for you guys. How many of you out there actually work on guitars? Maybe a better question would be, how many of you want to work on guitars? I'm gonna be pairing with one of the big companies who makes all kinds of supplies, parts, and tools, and we're gonna be doing some giveaways to you guys, the Trash to Thrash audience. I wanna know from you guys, what kind of tools would you want? For me, when I first started, I learned how to do wiring really good. And then I rewired all my guitars, got a ton of practice doing wiring. After that, I got more into doing finishes. After that, I got more into fret work. And each one of these little areas of the guitar require a completely different set of tools and knowledge and skill and a lot of practice to get good at. No one's first paint job, fret job, wiring job ever comes out beautiful. So you're gonna need to get a lot of practice in each one of those if you wanna get good at building a complete guitar. So that's why I recommend kind of choosing a field that interests you most to jump into and really get good at. So leave me a comment down below and let me know, do you work on guitars and what kind of tools would you like to add to your collection? All right guys, let's get into your questions now. First one up, any tips on swirl slash hydro dipping do's and don'ts? Plan on using magic marble paint in silver, white, and black for the swirl colors. That's funny you ask that because I just got the exact same paints in just a couple days ago here and I'm going to be doing the same thing. I have never done a hydro dip, but I have a customer who wants it and in the next couple weeks, I'm going to be dipping his guitar. I have a bunch of test bodies here, so I'm going to be testing out the extra colors that I don't plan on using for my customer's guitar. So I don't have any tips yet. I've watched a lot of videos on it and I've talked to a lot of people who have done it. Some say it's actually pretty easy, some say it's a little tricky. So. We're gonna try it and we're gonna find out once and for all. And I'm gonna show you guys. I'm gonna bring you along for the ride. So once I do have some tips and tricks for you guys, trust me, I'm gonna share them with you. If you've done hydro dips before and you have experience doing this, let us know in the comments. Give us your tips and tricks because even I could use them right now. Next question. My question is what is your favorite build that you've done? I've done a lot of builds at this point. And this is something people ask me all the time. But it comes down to, I'd say, three guitars, and they're in no particular order because I can't pick what my favorite build is. Um, one of them would be the Tiger Rhodes, my original Tiger Rhodes, the orange to red burst with the black stripes, the EMG 81TW and the 89R pickups. That was a killer guitar. I really liked that guitar. It was my first paint job that really blew me away when I did it. The next one would have to be the original Haxon, an alien blood paint job. There was a lot I really liked about that guitar. I liked the black chrome hardware. I loved that maple Jackson neck from the 90s, made in Japan, so nice. It also had an Iron Age Buried Alive Limited Edition kill switch, a crazy pickup setup with five pickups and really awesome switching that I came up with. So that was a really cool guitar that another one I didn't plan on selling and then someone threw a number out there to me and I uh, had to let it go. But it was the first Haxon I had ever done and just a really cool guitar with a lot of memories. And my final favorite guitar that I've done is the recent Lizard LTD. The one I think back on episode 33 or 34. One of my favorite guitars I've ever seen, really. I love that guitar. I love the green. I love the bridge on it. The pickups look super awesome. The way the crackle came out and the texture over the top. The matching headstock. That's one that I definitely would keep. And it's actually still available. I'm surprised no one has swooped it up yet. 
And if no one ever does, I will not be angry that I have to hold on to that one. Next question. Does the Godo Floyd Rose need any modification to drop into a Floyd original route? I have an Ibanez RG that takes a Floyd Rose original route, but I'd prefer a Goto Floyd. I heard the post measurements aren't the same, but there's nothing concrete or confirmed. So the posts are actually a little bit bigger for a Goto, but that's it's the same radius. So you can use the original uh, Floyd Rose posts, or in your case, Ibanez posts. If you have some type of Ibanez edge or different bridge setup, you know I can't guarantee everything's gonna work, but for the Jacksons that I've done it on, it's a direct replacement. You don't have to change the posts if you don't want to, but the posts that come with the Goto are better. So if you pop out the old ones, you're gonna have to drill out the, the old holes and make them bigger because the Goto ones are bigger. You also risk chipping your paint when you start pulling bushings out like that. So I don't know if you need to. If you're not really a super do-it-yourselfer, you could just swap it out. Make sure you intonate it before. Get your saddles in, you know, in the ballpark and re-intonate and all that, but you should be good. Next question. Can you physically refinish the Yamaha acoustic guitar if you wanted to? That's a good question. To be honest, I have no idea. Um, I have no experience refinishing acoustic guitars. I would think that the thickness of the paint would damage the sound because with acoustic guitars, the resonance of the wood is really where you get almost all your tone from. So I would think you shouldn't repaint an acoustic. Maybe you can do a stain or a dye. So I wouldn't paint that. Next question. All the guitars you make are amazing. Can you make a lizard skin neck? So I think you're referring to like the Lizard LTD that I did, try to make a neck that's like that. And actually uh, DZB, um, the Dean Zielinski company, he made a neck that's all, it's got like a, a, a CNC pattern on the back of it. It's like a geometric pattern. Yeah, you could put like texture on the back of a neck. A lot of people don't prefer that, but you could. Next question. Yo, what is that half and half crackle behind you? That looks insane. So this was actually a test I did a while ago when I got back into retro gaming and all that stuff. Um, I'm obsessed with Venom. Venom's my guy. On the old Spider-Man cartoons, when Venom would be in the light, half of his body would have like a blue shine and half would have like a reddish shine. So I did a guitar that was half blue, half red. I started polishing it and buffing it out. This guitar was a total experiment. It's actually an old cheap Squire body that I've had around for a while and it's had three or four or five paint jobs on it, including a Bumblebee paint job at one point. So for this one, I was just trying to do something really cool, test out this crackle. I really liked the way the crackle came out. And then, like I do with a lot of my tests, I find something else to test on it. I had just bought some new types of clear coat and I needed to test them out on something, so I sprayed them on here. And then I actually got some new uh, methods for sanding the clear coat on top. So I tried it on here. You can see I actually burned through hard using an electric sander on the clear coat, which I definitely don't recommend, but this was totally an experiment. So I wasn't planning on ever making this an, a real build. The back of the guitar, I actually used a dark red and a dark blue. And before the clear coat, you could see I had like black liquid dripping down, kind of like Venom Symbiote. It looked really cool, but then once I put the clear on, it kind of ruined that effect. So this will this will get sanded back down and this will become a project again. but. Venom Crackle, if anybody wants it, uh, request it and I can do it on your guitar. Next question. I'd like to see you do a crazy paint job on an acoustic, maybe EVH or Crackle. Side note, have you ever done Crackle over an EVH? Yeah, like I said a minute ago, I'm not sure you can layer that much paint on an acoustic. I mean, if I come across another cheap one, I'll try it just to see why, you know, see what happens. EVH or Crackle, I mean, that would be insane on an acoustic. I think there's a reason, though, that you don't see painted acoustics, really. Mostly they're dyed or stained. As far as the EVH Crackle goes, maybe I have tried it, maybe I haven't. Stay tuned. I'm sure uh, that's going to come up again. On the acoustic episode, I was actually considering throwing a kill switch on that acoustic. I have a really nice LTD acoustic that I picked up a couple months ago. I'm gonna throw a kill switch on it. It's an acoustic electric. That'd be hilarious if I threw it on a straight acoustic, not even an electric guitar, but no, the acoustic I have in the house, it is an acoustic electric. And yeah, I'm definitely gonna throw a gold guitar gut kill switch on that thing. I thought about even joking with you guys and telling you on the last episode, we're gonna throw a kill switch in this thing. We're gonna throw an EMG 81 and a Floyd Rose on it. And then the comments would have just been 
people just going crazy, I'm sure. Next question. Cool to see the guitar selection expansion. I'd still like to see mod more traditional guitars into some thrash machines. A Firebird with EMGs or a Jazzmaster with single volume in the kill switch. Splatter the body and crackle the pick guard. Some kind of mix up. Get those haters hating. I like that. I love that. Um, the Les Paul crackles. I thought that was like a weird divergence from what I normally do. I mean, it's crackle and kill switches and EMGs, but on a Les Paul. And then I did the acoustics last week, which I didn't really do anything extreme on. And I want to give a huge shout out and thanks to two of the viewers out there, Alan and Max. They sent me out some really cool video game stuff over the last couple weeks. Here you can see a bunch of stuff that I bought off Max at a great price. If you guys have old video game stuff that you want to donate to the channel or send in, I love that stuff. So send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. I can send you a prepaid shipping label. So if you want to send me anything, I'll have the shipping covered for you. I'll even buy it off you. Alan sent me a really awesome package with a PlayStation 2 in it, a bunch of games, a bunch of PSP, and my favorite, N64 games. So, Alan, thank you so much. Both of these guys are going to be featured on upcoming episodes because I'm working on another guitar right here for Alan right now. And they're going to be on the gaming channel, me opening the packages that all this awesome stuff came with. So keep an eye out on that. Go subscribe to the gaming channel if you're into that kind of stuff. And yeah, I wanted to say thanks so much to Alan and Maxim. All right, so what would you guys think of the Stealth Frankenstrat? Let me know down in the comments what you thought of that thing. I thought it was a really cool guitar. I really like the parts that I put into the middle and the neck positions. Kind of made it a little different than the Charvel Frankenstrat and a little closer to the original OG Frankenstrat. I want to give another shout out and thank you to all the patrons out there. You guys are absolutely killing it lately, so I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. All the rest of you, if you want to go join the Patreon, there's a link down in the description. You can sign up for as little as a dollar a month or as much as $10 a month. And if you do the $10 a month CEO tier, you're entered automatically every month into the giveaways I do. The giveaways for the guitars. In this case, it's going to be that awesome Stealth Frankenstrat over there. And I do big prize packages every month. So go over there, sign up to the CEO tier. Again, I want to thank Alan and Maxim for sending me that awesome video game stuff. If you guys want to send me any guitars or video game stuff, send me an email, mark at guitarguts.com. I'll write you back and we'll figure out how we're going to do this. Thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next week. Rock on, my friends.